Welcome to a, another Monday and hopefully you guys are having a good day so far. Um, this is where we do a 20 question mock test. So you guys contribute by putting your answers into the chat. And I answer any questions that you guys may have about the theory test or the driving test. I'm actually going to be doing a live demo of has perception. Um, you guys are still struggling with it and you guys are still asking. So at the end of the 20 question mock test, I will be doing a has a perception um, demo as well, just to explain what it's about. So if you guys are struggling with that, put in the chat, let me know if you're struggling, what you're actually struggling with. And I can answer that while we're going along. And then I can do a demo for you guys as well. But hopefully you guys are having a good start to your week. And the weather's decent where you are actually in North London, where I was today. Um, the weather was actually decent. I had the windows open, just cruising around with my pupil, having a good time. Um, right, let me just see who's here, saying hello to some of you guys. Let me come out of this. On Chris. Um, welcome. I've not seen your name before, so I'm assuming you're new. So welcome to you. I can't pronounce your name, but welcome. I've not seen your name before either, I don't believe. Um, and you've got I'm in. I'm assuming that has perception, hopefully. Um, or you guys are having a conversation amongst yourself. I've got I'm waiting on that. Um, oh, right. You've got your test tomorrow. Oh, wow. Um, well, hopefully that goes well for you. Um, if you've got any questions, put it in the chat. Let me send you in that test tomorrow with a bit more confidence. Yeah, so Chris, if you've got any questions, pull it in the chat. Let me answer it while we are live. 4.30 tomorrow, um, a PM test. I don't know if you guys are actually talking about waiting for the live to come on or you guys having your own private conversation, but either way, it's all good. Test book for the 17th, which is next week, Wednesday, I believe. Again, hopefully that goes right for you. Milad, welcome. Caroline, good to see you're back. Welcome. Jartuo, hopefully I'm saying that right. And again, another newcomer. There's quite a few newcomers again. Quite a few comers every week, which is nice to see. Oh, you guys are having a conversation. I'm just catching up with the chat. Pete says, I don't think he started yet. Yeah, it's 4.30. I can't go live any sooner. YouTube won't let me. No, it's 4.30. I'm still working at one o'clock. Dynamic Dylan. No problem you're here this week. George, welcome. Uh, why do people cheat the theory test? What do you mean by that? Just quick, put put ah, put a quick de um explanation. What do you mean by why do people cheat the theory test? Rejoice, welcome, Filippo, welcome, gift. All these new names I've not seen before. So all of you guys are welcome, and thank you for joining live. I know you got to give up some of your time for that so i appreciate that yes i literally saw your message before i came live um you said about you failed your fairy test last year and you want to get back on track but that's all you put you didn't put any more information um what do you well, well while we're live uh, tell me how you're going to get back on track or if you want information of how to do that It's cold now. Simply me, welcome. I didn't recognise the name. I just saw the um, message of I'm cold now. Welcome. Hopefully you are well. Have you booked another driving test yet, Simply Me? Right. Before we go anywhere, I can talk to you guys all day and going through your messages. Keep them coming. Test is next week. You've got another live. I'm here next Monday on the 15th. Um, so you can, while you're studying this week, write down any questions you may have 
any concerns bring it along to the live next week let me answer it and send you into that test on wednesday next wednesday with a lot of confidence yeah t noreen i was in north london teaching this week i am actually in north london this week not just today um and the weather was really good um we was driving around wood green and tottenham and palmer's green right let me come out of that first and foremost get rid of that right so let me do an overview for all of you that are new i tend to do an overview of the theory test because i don't assume you guys know how the theory test works you'd be surprised how many people don't know how the test works and then we're going to get into a 20 question mock test and as i said after the mock test i would do a hazard perception so any of you that are struggling with hazard perception let me know in the chat first and foremost and then um and let me know what you're struggling with whether you're clicking too early too late don't understand what it's about and then i can give a full explanation before i go live in the demo so the theory test is 50 questions if you don't know it's made up of 14 categories and the 50 questions is drawn from the 14 categories so if there's 10 of you in the room it's going to be 10 different mock tests it's not the same mock test for all of you in the room it's random so you may get five road signs five for one of the road users two motorway questions and so on and so on you just don't know how the combinations are made up and that's why i always say study the categories first all categories individually and then move on to mock test some of you are just doing mock test after mock test and then what you um, realize when you go for the real test you fail it and that's because you're not exposing yourself to all the questions on the app so that's what you need to do 57 um multiple choice 50 questions time 57 minutes you have to score 43 out of 50 to pass the theory side of it if you're not sure about the questions flag it move on and then go back to the flagged ones i think i've done a video recently in the last couple of weeks explaining about flagging moving on hints and tips and all the rest of it with that once you click end you then move on to the hazard perception it's 14 videos 13 of them have single hazards um where you can score a maximum of five and one of them's got a double hazard which you can score 10 on so you need to keep clicking you have to average at least three across the board if your average is less than three per video you're going to fail that side of things um and if you guys are using the driving test success app they've just updated um the hazard perception bits and pieces it looks slightly different which i just found out this morning when i was studying um, teaching my class um there's no tricks the word fairy test is just worded badly written badly so definitely read the questions carefully because some of the answers is open to interpretation and all you're looking for in the theory test is always safety outcome has to be safety if it's not safe then it's going to lead to a controlled outcome and most importantly do not overthink the theory test and don't make it personal it's not about you it has to be a generic answer for the same for everyone across the country regardless of where you're taking it once you make it personal or add things in take things out that question is no longer the same which means you're going to choose a different answer so that's the overview of the theory test let me just catch up with you guys on the comments um hello dorian i'm still in i've been following this my passport project oh well done to you 49 out of 50 so let me just put this on silent otherwise it's going to ping 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 people don't realize i'm on the live all right so some silent um well done selena uh, let me know if uh and 64 out of 75 that's a high score for his perception that's a lot better than me doing mine on the mock test when i've been doing the last couple of videos so well done to you um let me know what your next step is whether it's going to be driving lessons or driving tests no you definitely you're gonna make that makes you drowsy especially from the driving lesson open the windows get some fresh air in and enjoy it while you can especially where you are like i said good luck with that somewhere if you've got any questions my lad um just let me know pull it in the chat let me answer it before you got before we sign off friday the 
12. Christy, same. Anything you got want answered, put it in the chat. Let me do it before we sign off. Fabian's new. I've not seen your name before. I failed my hands of perception by 20 points. That definitely needs a lot of work. If you've got 20, that needs a lot of work. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of work. There's not much I can say to that. I'm still in my practical lessons. My test is in two weeks. Any words of wisdom? Yeah, listen to your driving instructor. Um, simple as that. Um, when you go for your driving test, just try to relax. Um, just give the examiner what he's looking for, which is safety and control. It's simple as that. Don't try and do anything different. If you're going for your test and you're going with an, ex an instructor, they think you're good enough to pass. You literally need to do what they've told you to do. The examiner's not looking for anything different, nothing special. But the most important thing is try to relax. And another little tip I will give you, when you get parked up on the left, you're going to get parked up on the left about four times. It's uphill, downhill, level gradient, angle start. Every time he parks you up, go handbrake, neutral, relax, come off the pedals, chill. And he'll just say, drive on when you're ready. It's when you're ready. Take a deep breath before you set up to go again. And what he's looking for before you move off is blind spot checks. Give him blind spots. All right, um, April the 16th, which is next Tuesday. Thank you for the videos that are helpful. Again, if you've got any questions, put in the chat. Right, we're going to start the mock test. Keep the chat coming. I'm going to keep monitoring that as we go through. So let me share my screen and get rid of this. Right, for those of you that are new, that's not seen any of the lives before, we read the question first. So in this case, when may you drive without wearing your seatbelt? This is option A. This is option B. This is option C. And this is option D. You're trying to put the question number. Hopefully you can see my mouse. Um, so if you think it's 1A, then you put 1A in the chat. And the reason I say every week, there's a delay between me and YouTube, you and YouTube. So I want to make sure we're always on the same question number so put it in the chat thank you fabian appreciate that marie welcome the vita saying hi to everyone love that there's no username on that um, but thank you for coming back and letting me know. Appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Jordan, it's nice to know who I'm talking to. So again, welcome. Gift, appreciate that. Welcome. Welcome all, everyone's welcome. First timer, second timer, regulars. All right, let me see if these ones are coming through. God, there's so much of you here. How much of you online? 87, wow. Appreciate you guys turning up. Right, straight away, you guys are gone for. Let's see, put the question number. I know what you meant because it's the first question, but once we move on, um, you need to put the question number. Josh, any tips for learning road signs? Yes, my study with me series. Um, road signs, I've got a road sign video as well that breaks down the shapes and colors. Everything you want about road signs is on the channel. I have a playlist with the Study With Me series. There's a Practice Makes You Better series. Um, and there's a video that breaks down the shapes and colours on the channel. That's the best way to do it. Again, Jordan, put the number, please. All right, Marcy, if you've gone for a 1C, the list, oh, you changed it. Oh, someone's gone for a B. Honourable Chris, going for B. 
Charlene, I've not seen your name before, so welcome to you. <clears throat> right, one C is the common answer. Where's C? When carrying that maneuver includes reversing. Yes, the reason why you can remove your seatbelt when reversing is because it's slow moving. If anything goes wrong, technically you're not going to go through the windscreen. And because you need to twist in your seat to look over your shoulder, the seatbelt can be restrictive. That I will give you a clue as well on a real test. Um, they can use if you're exempt. So if you've got a doctor's certificate to exempt you, i.e. pregnancy is a common one. Um, that could be an option as well on the real test. What should you do if there's a bus at a bus stop ahead of you? So type away. Let me catch up with you guys in the chat. Joe, first time, welcome to you. Test is on Thursday. And my pupils test on this week, Thursday as well, five o'clock. Um, let me know if you've got any questions, Joe. Type it in the chat. Let me answer it for you. You guys are talking to each other, which is nice. What time are you ending the live today? I'm assuming you mean what time am I ending? I haven't got a strict time today. Um, I stay on within reason as long as you guys got questions. Like once I do the hazard perception demo, if there's no questions, I sign off. So we're looking roughly about six o'clock, give or take, but it's not written in stone. Where can I book for my favorite test? Online, dvsa.gov.uk. Make sure it's the official website. If you're paying more than £23, it's not the official site. I wish you luck with it again. If you've got any question for any of you that's got a test this week or any other week for that matter, pull it in the chat. Any questions, any concerns that you may have, let me answer it. All right, what are we on two? Let me get to 2B. There we go. Diana, it's good to see you here again. Right, most of you. Charlene's gone for a 2A. I've got to assume it's two, the correct answer is 2B because um, that's what the majority has gone for. The majority wouldn't be wrong. I'm assuming the majority wouldn't be wrong. Patricia, it's nice to see that you're here. Linda, welcome. Right, most of you have gone for 2B. Uh, what's the question? What should you do if there's a bus at a bus stop ahead of you? 2B, watch carefully for sudden appearance. Yes, pedestrians will cross in front of the bus. So you've got to be careful with that. Can you see that? Yep. What does this sign mean? With images, I always suggest you look at the, read the question first, look at the image, because sometimes there's clues in the image, and then go to your options. Never go from question um, question to answers always look at the image and study the image and if you're using the drive-in test success app you can enlarge the image to get more detail Jordan thank you for the shoot super chat I appreciate that thank you so much rejoice on the 16th of March, I want to start practical. No, I don't do driving lessons in Dagenham, nowhere near. Um, and I don't do driving lessons. I do intensive courses, rejoice. So um, yeah, I specialize in intensive courses over five days. That you'll have to Google or ask friends or family if they've got a driving instructor they can recommend. George. 25th of April, you've got a little way to go yet. 15th next week, 22nd. So it's about two weeks, two and a half weeks time. So you've got plenty of time to study. You've got two more lives as well. So you can always come to the lives, bring any questions. Let me answer it for you. Number Your avatar's gone simply, me. It's disappeared. Our new drivers are supposed to have a green P sign. 
I'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah, most of you gone for C. So again, the majorities looks like they're C. Let me just make sure no one's gone for something different. Lady B, I've not seen your name before, so welcome to you. Sneaking through the back door. Yeah, most of you gone for C. Uh, right hand lane closed. Yes. Um, left. Can you see my mouse? Let me click on this. Um, left lane's open. Middle lane's open. Right lane is closed off. Which type of vehicle does this sign apply to? So again, look at the image. And then go to your options. Right, our new drivers are supposed to have a green peace sign on their cars. There is a question related to this, but I can't remember how it was structured. Our new drivers are expected to have no. That's optional. Having a new driver so someone's passed the test, that's optional. Um, it's up to you whether you want to have a P plate on. So hopefully that answers that. that's awareness and planning that's a good habit to have so you've been taught well that's the instructor teaching you that most pupils keep their eyes straight looking straight forward rather than looking under cars for or between cars for information On the falls. Oh, here we go. They're coming now. Right again, most of you are not the gun for D, the majority. So I have to assume the majority is correct. Right, it looks like. All of you have gone for the D. Yep. Um, high vehicles, uh, again, clue, height. Arrows up and down. If it was side to side, it'd be a width restriction. So high vehicles is correct. Oh, this is interesting. Um, what's the nearest you may park at a junction? So what's the nearest you may park at a junction? How can I manage to get a slot to book my favorite test? Please, I need help. That's the DVSA website. You need to go on the DVSA or Google it. Um, it's dvsa.gov. No, it's not. It's the .gov, dot .gov uk website. But if you have to Google it, but again, make sure you're an official site. There's quite a few companies out there trying to make it look like the DVSA website and charge you an arm and a leg to book a, drive, a theory test. If it's not £23, you're on the wrong site. Or you can do the old fashioned way and phone them up. But if you phone them up, you're going to be on the phone for a long time because they're not the fastest people of answering the phone. Della, uh, welcome to you. Thank you. Oh, well done. Congratulations. Again, um, let me know what your next step is if you're taking the driving lessons or looking to book a driving test now. Self-taught, even better. There we go, here they come, five. B, D, difference of opinion there. Right, so the majority have gone for D's. 
if I'm assuming B is wrong. Yeah, most of your D's. All right, let's take a look what D is. 10 meters. Yeah, a little tip for you guys as well. The only meters that you need to know, as much as I hate, say, memorized numbers, um, the only meters that you need to know is 10 meters is where you place your truck. Uh, 10 meters is where you park near a junction. 45 meters is where you place a triangle from a broken down car. And 100 meters when you turn your lights on for poor visibility. That's the only meters that you need to know. 10, parking. 45, place your triangle from a broken down car. And 100 meters is when you turn your lights on. If it's anything other than that, it's all it's, your answers are going to be wrong. Who's legally responsible for ensuring that a vehicle registration certificate, otherwise known as a V5C, is updated? So who's legally responsible? You're traveling along a single track road. There's a passing place on your right. What should you do if you see a vehicle coming towards you? Can you please explain passing place? Passing place is where you make the road wider. That's what a passing place is. So you're going down a the road. There's only room for one car, but another one's coming towards you. A passing place is where you pull into to make the road wide or you stop opposite. So if it's on your left, you pull into it. If it's on your right, you stop opposite and then a the car goes into the space on the right. You drive on and it takes the space that you left. So a passing place is like a gap, basically, part between parked cars in a city, for example. This just is a single track road. So on your driving test, the examiner is going to take you down narrow roads where there's only room for one car. On the driving test, it's called meeting situation. And you're, you're assessed and judged on how you deal with that situation. So hopefully that helps. Some of you are asking questions. I have seen the questions. I'm just starring them. I will come back to it. So I have seen your questions if I don't answer it straight away. Um, 6B, the first ones. Most of you are agreeing on this. Right, most of you have gone for B, or all of you have gone for B so far. Right, the registered vehicle keeper, yes. The name on the V5C document is the person that's responsible. Um, another question that comes up about the V5C document, which document should you not leave in your car? It's going to be the V5C. And to be honest, there's no reason why you should be walking around with that document. Keep it in a safe place at home. You've just been overtaken by this motorcyclist. What should you do if the rider cuts in sharply? Again, always look at the image and then go to your options. I think you mentioned that previously on the live that you had um, driving lessons from a police person quite a few years back. Can a learner driver go on the mock way and dual carriageway? Yes and no. Dual carriageway, right, let me just explain. Motorways, you can go on the motorway as a learner driver, but it has to be with a driving instructor in a dual control car. You can't go on the dual carriageway, sorry, on the motorway with friends or family. It has to be with a driving instructor in a dual control car. On the dual carriageway, the green primary routes, you can go in there as a learner driver with friends and family, as well as a driving instructor. So hopefully that clears it up. But on a motorway, it has to be with a driving instructor as a learner driver.
What's the difference between motorways and dual carriageway? There isn't motorway and a dual carriage. Technically, for a ferry test anyway, there isn't a difference. A dual car the definition of a dual carriageway is a crash barrier down the middle. And also motorway has a crash barrier down the middle. So technically it's the same thing. You can get into finer detail, but the ferry test is simple, black and white. So I'm not going to go into that. There's no difference between a motorway and a dual carriageway. As long as it's got a crash barrier down the middle, it can be classed as both. And the speed limit is the same for both cars, um, towing vehicles, heavy goods vehicle, and both of them. Looking for driving. Where about Della? What whereabouts are you? What part of the country you're in? I'm looking for driving lesson. Not that I can help, but what part of the country? It's nice to know where you guys are from. So do congratulations and thank you for letting me know. Let me know in the chat. Um, taking driving lessons. Are you going to take driving lessons next, or uh, a drive? Look to book a driving test. What number one seven? Sorry, guys. I'm just looking for your sevens. Sixes are still coming through. All right, here we go. I think that this one's pretty much straightforward. And the reason being as well, it's got the word safe in the answer. So B's going to be correct. Always keep a safe gap. Um, why should you reduce your speed when you're driving or riding fog? Why should you? Um, yes, again, yes or no with that. Bus lanes, you can, funny enough with my people today, let me just driving to Wood Green. Um, bus lane you can drive in that particular bus lane that time was 7 till 10 and 4 till 7 so she could drive in the bus lane if it's 24 hour bus lane then obviously not and if it was if her lesson was after 4 o'clock then obviously we couldn't drive in there so certain bus lanes you can drive in there just double check the time and the examiner expects you to drive in the bus lane if you can Made in Lagos. Welcome for being here. Yeah, I've done that ages ago. I can't remember doing that recently, but um, yeah, you probably watched an old video, but yeah, um, makes life a little bit easier when you go for the test to know that the meters, knowing the meters that you really need to know if that makes sense. Uh, well, first and foremost, you've done one of the things. I'd uh, be on the live. Um, you're on Wednesday, so there's no other lives between now and then. Take your time. Read the questions carefully. Read the questions carefully. Read the answers carefully. Flag any questions that you're not sure of. Move on. And then when you go back to the flag ones, if you still don't know what the answer is, um, I think I've done a video that went out on Thursday, I believe. Um, reverse engineer. Work backwards. Work out what it can't be. Um, if I can show you on this one, I don't know what the answer is on this one. I'll show you what I'm talking about working backwards. And look for clues in the question. Look for clues in the answer. That's my um, advice to you. And the biggest one that I give all my pupils when you go in there, sound silly, brief. Make sure you take slow, steady breaths, especially if you feel like you're freaking out and panicking. The brain needs oxygen. Give it all it wants. Um, right, let me catch up with you guys. Number eight. There we go. First one. Eight. D, D, D. Again, the majority of you are going for Ds. Right, let me 
see if this makes sense. Um, what should you do to reduce your speed when driving on, on the ride in fog? Right, let's just say for argument's sake, this is what I'm talking about, reverse engineer. <clears throat> so if you don't know what the answer is, Sorry, that's my fault. Can you hear me now? So, um, all right, let, I'll try to find your nines and I'll go back to what I said about the driving lessons. Hopefully you guys can hear me now. Can't see the nines. Right, most of you type in no audio. Hopefully you can hear me now because it's flashing up as coming through. So I apologize about that. 
Right, here we go. There's a Charlene's coming through. Right, most of you gone for 9D. Right. Uh, what's the red alarm? What's the question? You see this amber traffic light ahead. Which traffic lights or lights will come on next? Steady amber. It's going to be red. If you do your lights from bottom to top, I've always said in my videos, it makes life easier because it's all single colours. Green, steady amber, red, and then it goes red and amber together, coming down and then back to green. What do these zigzag white lines mean? Right, sorry, someone, I'm not gonna be able to find it in all the chat. Someone asked me about driving lessons with an uncle. I think I was muted at the time. Um, my question, my answer was why eight to 10 lessons? How do you know you're gonna be ready in eight to 10 lessons and by your uncle? If your uncle's not a driving instructor, that's not gonna be good enough. Because you said if they think you're good enough, it's a family member. It's got to be a bad family member to say you're rubbish at driving. So they're always going to think your driving's good. They're not going to spot what the examiner's looking for. So my advice would be to get a driving instructor, get your driving assessed, have a two hour lesson. That instructor should be able to assess your driving, show you your weaknesses and show you your strengths. And then you can translate that to your uncle and then work on it. They go back to the instructor to make sure you're improved. But just because you can drive a car, it doesn't mean that you're driving it safely or the way the examiner wants you to drive it. That's a difference because a lot of people think they can move the car from A to B. They're good enough at driving because they don't crash. That doesn't make no sense. You have to drive the way the examiner is looking for, i.e. safety and control. So my advice is getting the driving instructor as well as your uncle. Combine the two. So hopefully that helps. Right. Most of you have gone for B. Right. What's B? No park. Yeah, zigzag says no parking at any time. If you do get caught parking, then it's an instant fine if you get caught straight away. And another one on the real test, I can ask you what's, what should you do between zigzags and it's overtake. You should never overtake on approach to a zigzag or between zigzags. What does this sign mean? Della, you're Milton Keynes. That's literally just up the motorway from me. Um, roundabout city. There's lots of roundabouts down there. Crazy. Um, the test center is not too bad from what I've heard. I've not been there myself, but I've heard good things about Milton Keynes test center. But yeah, you're going to need to know your roundabouts on that. Can more than one person be in the back seat if I'm learning with family? Can more than one person be in the back seat from the family? Yes. But the question I would ask, why? Because you can get distracted by that. Um, don't get me wrong, it's good practice for when you pass your test um, while you're doing that. But the question is, why would you want someone else in the back seat? But the answer to your question, keeping it simple, yeah, you can have um, many people in the back seat. It's up to you. There's no restriction. Obviously, as, as long as it's legal. Congratulations on passing. Thanks for coming back or coming and let me know that you passed. Congratulations. What tip you got to give me? I can give you 101 tips for a driving test. Uh, what in particular are you looking for?
No, I like I said before, I don't do driving lessons. I do intensive courses and they are booked up at this point in time, unfortunately. No problem. All right, let me go back to catching up with you guys, 11. Right. Again, the majority of you gone for C, so I've got to assume that's correct. Right, uh, let's take a look at C, we'll see. Risk of ice, yeah, that's supposed to be a snowflake. So it's a risk of ice. Uh, what should you do if a left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs? Interesting question. Hey, boy, you've gone for 11B. That's the wrong answer. As you know, now it's C. <laughs> You're telling everyone what it is, but you picked the wrong answer. Right, here we now go. 12 B's arrived. Here's 12. Right, again, majority of you have gone for B. Right, got to B majority. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Yeah, what should you do if you're on the left, left hand side? Yes, pedestrians walking in the road. It's correct. On what type of road surface may anti lock brakes be? And if this came up this morning and everyone got it wrong, uh, what type of road surface may anti lock brakes be ineffective? I'm a new learner, haven't driven much. Tips for beginner. Uh, yeah. Um, the tip I would give you is go with the driving instructor. It's going to be a lot calmer, a lot easier. Um, and if you've got a decent instructor, they will keep you calm while you're stressing out because you will stress on the first couple of lessons because it is scary to be fair. But once you get started and realize, hold a minute, it isn't that bad. Um, so that's my advice is try to find a decent instructor. Um, as a learner drive, new learner driver, I would watch videos. Um, cause you're watching, well, you're on live, you watch, I'm assuming you've watched some of my videos cause you're on the channel. So there's nothing wrong with watching driving videos, um, driving school TV, um, Clearview driving school is another good one. D D G N is another good one. Those are the guys I would recommend. They do mock tests and driving lessons cause you can learn a lot from videos. So when you go for your driving lessons, you already know what you're trying to let yourself in for. That's my advice for you. And don't put pressure on yourself. Some of you guys go for a driving lesson. I've got to be ready by next week kind of thing. Um, the more pressure you put on yourself, the more stress you're going to get. Because every time you make a mistake, you think you're going to not make where you want to be. Um, and on dr the biggest one that I would always give my pupils every Monday morning, you're a learner driver. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. You are going to mess up. It's not end of the world if you mess up. The more mistakes you make, the better driver you become because you're going to learn from it, especially if you've got a decent instructor who explains why it went wrong and what you could do to make it better. Trying to avoid making mistakes is ridiculous because it's too much pressure, too much stress. So don't be afraid to mess up. It's a win-win situation. You do it well, you learn. You do it bad, you're going to learn. Can't lose. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, 13.
Most of you are getting it right. It's interesting. This morning, everybody got it wrong. You guys are smarter than my class. Yeah, it's gonna be loose. That's like sand or gravel. It's gonna be most effective on dry and least effective on, or in this case, ineffective, on loose, sand or gravel. What does this junction, why, dyslexia, why does this junction have a stop sign at and a stop line on the road? Again, take a look at the image, take the information in, and then go to your options. Toyin, congratulations on passing your theory test. Thank you for letting me know. Appreciate it. Let me do as long as you guys do in the C's. By Ina Ali. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I've not seen your name before. Congratulations. Sneaking in. No problem. Yeah, just get yourself a decent instructor that you can talk to and hopefully they keep you calm. Dennis Wilson, welcome to you. All right, here's the 14s coming through now. Oh, difference of opinion, C, C, D. Again, I've got to assume um, C is correct. So Charlene, you've gone down the D route for whatever reason. I'll take a look at what D is. Uh, right, most people have gone for C. Right, someone went for D, busy junction. There's no cars visible, so it can't be busy. The reason is, is C, because um, visibility you can't see clearly to the left. So by law, you have to stop. The wheels have to stop turning. If your wheels do not stop turning at a stop sign, you automatically fail your driving test. Where would you see these road markings? My driving instructor is a grade A. Um, grade, there's a grade A, high grade A, low grade A, high grade B, low grade B. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, grade A is more for uh, the examiners or the DVSA to make sure we keep our licenses. That's all it is. Because you can have a grade A instructor, and I know quite a few, but they are awful at making someone stay calm. So it's not really about the grade. It's more about the person be able to read you as an individual and keeping you calm knowing what's going to help you learn and changing the lessons, adapting to you rather than a bog standard drive lesson for everybody. So grade A is good to have. I'm a grade A, high grade A, um, but it doesn't mean to say I'm the best driving instructor. That would be down to my pupils to say yay or nay on that. But yes, down to the individual keeping you calm more than anything else. What's the difference with all the beacon light? I'm not understanding that. Please, what's the difference with all the beacon? Like, what's a beacon light? You've got to give me a bit more information on that. I don't know what a beacon light is. Oh, unless I'm missing something. 15. There's the first one, D. Yeah, it must have gone for D. That's, a, that's a, what we call a traffic calming measure, speed hump. And there's three traffic calming measures, speed hump, width restriction, 
and chicanes and all of them are designed to reduce your speed so it is the which shape is used for a give way sign again look at the images a b c or d and go from there Yeah, totally agree. Um, just because you've got driving experience from a different country, you've got to get to you got to get used to the UK rules of the road. And again, get an instructor, and they can assess your driving, and give you tips to get to where you want to get to. And I don't think I will say to that as well because the, this is for all of you looking to take driving lessons or learn with family members and friends. Um, the waiting time for a driving test is really long. The last thing you want to do is go there, not be ready, fail it, and then go to wait another three, four months, whatever it is in your area. I wish you luck with that. Um, let us know how you get on next week, but I wish you luck. If you've got any questions, put it in the chat so I can answer it before we sign off. Six. Oh, let me come back to that. Sixteen, where's the oh there we go? And then the majority is still these. So Andrew Hill wrong way around, but I know what you mean. Right, yes, yeah, the upside down triangle. And if you didn't know, octagon is a stop sign. Obviously, the upside down triangles are give way, and it's the only shapes in the highway code like it. So there's no misunderstanding it's give way or a stop sign. You can't mistake it, mistaking it with another sign. Uh what can what can people who live or work in towns and cities do to help reduce urban pollution levels? A mouthful. No problem, Dynamic Dylan. Hopefully, I'll see you next week. Um, if I don't, um, enjoy your week. Stay safe. What's the difference between L plates and P plates? L plates are learner driver and P plates is someone who's just passed their driving test. P plates is optional. You don't have to have it. But if you feel that you want to let people know that you just passed your test so they can be understanding, if they're understanding, then put P plates on. But L plates are learner plates. That's what the L is for, a learner driver. Uh, Caroline's going for 17B. Right, most of you have gone for B. Uh, let's take a look. What's B? What's the question? What can people do? Yeah, walk or cycle. Um, don't take your car. Save the environment. Um, what's the national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a motorway? What's the national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a motorway? Meter, meter. 
Oh, right. The meters. Uh, Tina Reen, it is 10 meters where you should not park near a junction. 45 meters is where you place a triangle from a broken down car. And 100 meters is when you turn your lights on for poor visibility. 10, 45 and 100. That's the only meters that you need to know. If it's outside of those meters, then um, the answer is going to be wrong. So I'm just trying to find the 18s. Where's the first one? Oh, before I forget, those of you who are here that can make it next week, what I'll try and do, if time permitting, I'll do one of my mock tests where I'll make the questions up um, just to make sure you guys are learning. I've not done one for a while. I don't think I've done one this year. No, I've done one at the beginning of the year, but I haven't done one since. So I will make up the questions um, to make sure you guys ain't memorizing the answers because these fairy test ones are getting kind of easy at the moment. I feel anyway, maybe you guys think differently, but I'll do that next week. So if you can make it next week, um, you'll be facing my mock test. But most of you have gone for A. Um, yeah, a car motorcycle on a motorway dual carriageway is going to be 70 miles an hour. Um, why is it important to wear suitable shoes when you're driving? Key word there is why. Toying, it slows you down. Um, alcohol slows your reaction, slows your words down. It makes you, especially if you get start to approach the, um, being drunk kind of thing. So it slows your reaction time down. And it makes your words slurred. Um, so that's what that is on that one. No problem. Congratulations and thank you for letting me know that you've um, passed the theory test. I appreciate you coming back and letting me know. It inspires me to keep going. Thank you, Izzy. Um, appreciate that. 19. No problem. Here's the first one. 19 C's. These are the common answers. Yeah, I'll... Um, time permitting as long as I can do it during the week I'll sell it up during the week so it's good to go for next Monday but um, I'll do my best for that because I ain't done one for a while there's no letter with that my lad right most of you gone for C's uh, question is why is it suit where it's level to maintain control yeah ideally you shouldn't drive one foot barefooted I have so many people over the years when they drive barefoot and sandals is not the best driving shoes or high heels for you females. Not saying you can't do it, but it's not sensible. Um, what's the legal minimum tread depth for tyres on a trailer, on your trailer or caravan? What's the average time you wear a car for a caravan? Ernest, I can't answer that. Everybody's different. So I can't answer that. I would, again, if you've got a driving instructor, talk to your driving instructor. They'll have a better judge of whether you're capable of going out on your own with a family member. But that's something I can't answer, not knowing you or seeing you drive. Because everyone's different. Some people learn fast. Some people learn slow. So if you're a slow learner, then obviously... You're going to need more lessons. If you're a fast learner, you can go with your family member a lot sooner. 
So talk to your instructor, that's your best bet. Don't be afraid to talk to your instructor. They're there to guide you in every shape or form. And if they're not, ask yourself why. Stopping distances, right. Um, first of all, I've got a video uh, on that, on the channel. I believe it's in the playlist of question of the week. Stopping distances have changed. They've taken it out of the stopping distances. So where it was 20 miles now, 30, 40, 50, they've taken all of that out. So you don't need to go into too much detail on that. But what you do need to know is dry conditions is two seconds. Wet conditions is double or four seconds. They can wear it either way. And ice and snow is up to 10 times longer. I just repeat that. Driving on dry conditions, two seconds to stop, 40 miles an hour more technically. And if it's wet, it could be double or four seconds. And if it's ice and snow, it's up to 10 times longer. You don't need to know the indiv individual speed limits and stopping distances anymore. They've taken all of that out. But I have got a video on the channel, question of the week playlist, and it's in there somewhere. In detail. 20. Right, yeah, I can just see from this, all of you gone for 20D. Oh, I've got to assume that's correct. Right, must have gone for 20D, which is 1.6. Um, as much as this trailer or caravan, any tire they talk about on the theory test, um, it's going to be 1.6. It's a legal requirement, which you guys need to know, because if your tires is less than 1.6 and you got stopped by the police, it carries points. And it's three points, three points per tire. So you can lose your license in one go if you're not careful. Right, let me just tidy up some of these questions. Can you do a test on only road markings? Can I do a test on road markings or can you do a test on road markings? If if it's you, um, yes, go on the apps and do road signs. Um, if it's me, there's no benefit in that because not everyone struggles on road markings. I'm trying to make the test open for everyone. Um, but again, I've got a video on the channel. I still believe it's question of the week when I used to do those on road markings, red routes, yellow lines, center lines, all the rest of it. So again, on the playlist, um, question of the week, there's a road marking video. But for me to do one, it we will count out a lot of you who's not struggling with road markings. So it wouldn't make sense. But if, if you mean you individually, yeah, you can do that on the app. Just set it up in the settings ruby yes where um i think the i can't remember who was asking the question about the alcohol they was talking about reaction times so the alcohol slows your reaction times down by increasing your confidence that's why when people get drunk they get into fights because they feel confident can take on the whole world so it increases your confidence so which means you take risk when driving when you shouldn't be and that's why um that answer is what it is all right let me just see if you guys got any other comments again that's in the video it'd be i'm wasting your time and everybody else's time me talking about stopping distances and their calculation because they don't do that anymore so it's pointless in studying for something they don't cover in the theory test. But if you want stopping distances, thinking distance plus braking distance, your best bet is to watch the video and get a breakdown for that. All you need to know is the two seconds, four seconds or double and 10 seconds for ice and snow. My advice, unless for some reason you want that information, I would be laser focused for your theory test. Only study stuff 
that matters that you can always look up afterwards for your driving test if you want. But if you want to go deep, there's a video on the channel. Again, question of the week. I'm in North London all week this week. I'm actually, my course is actually in North London this week. And I'm back in Luton 15th, I think, which is next week. So, yeah, I'll be driving around um, Wood Green, Tottenham, probably Wednesday. We go to, I'll take the people to the test center on Wednesday, watch a test take place and um, drive around the Tottenham test routes. Does that mean they change very questions? Just do what they say. T Noreen, you've got to give me information. I don't understand what that means. Does that mean they change very questions or still the same? What are you relating that to? Just give me a bit more information, please, on that. I'm going to do the hazard perception now. Let me just catch up with the comments, my lad, and I'm going to do a hazard perception video right now. Um, can I change my instructor if I'm not finding him or... Can I change my instructor if I'm not finding him or her? I'm assuming you mean you find not find them helpful or any good. Yes, you're paying a fee. Um, it's like a shop. If you're not happy with their service, you take your business elsewhere. So if you're not happy with your instructor, find the instructor you're happy with. You're paying them. Um, the only problem with that, there's not a lot of instructors out there. So if you find a good one, hang on to them. If it's a bad one, um, yeah, I would still change them if you're... If um, you're not happy, if someone wasn't happy with me, I'd rather be honest and we just go our separate ways. Trust me as well. If I get a pupil that I'm not happy with for whatever reason, because they're stubborn, whatever it is, I get rid. Um, it works two ways. If I can't teach someone because they don't want to listen, I'll see you later. It's pointless and wasting my time and their time and their money. So it works both ways. Um, oh, I don't know why I took it off. Can you please speak with on speed limits? I do not see them on every road, but we can also appear on the car. Right, <laughs> car dashboard, that <laughs> annoys me. Right, the car dashboard is advising you what the speed limit is. If the software is not updated or the camera's picked up a different speed limit, you're in trouble. So the speed limit on the dashboard is advising you, do not follow it. Right, speed limits for the roads, built up area, traffic, um, Street lights is 30 miles an hour. Um, but what you need to do is look for speed limit signs, repeater signs. If you don't see any signs at all, and it's a built up area, it's 30 miles an hour. Dual carriageways varies. Motorways is 70 miles an hour. Um, my advice is when you're driving, look for signs. If it's repeater signs, anything other than 30 miles an hour, every six lampposts, it will be there. One left, one right every six lampposts, but no signs, street lights is 30 miles an hour. But do not follow your sat nav, do not follow the information on the dashboard because it could be giving you wrong information. All right, let me quickly, oops, do the has perception for you guys that's the way in have learning difficulties like dyslexia, I find your video easy to follow. The, one of the reasons why you find it easier because I've got dyslexia. So I know how I would like to be taught and I teach people in my class who's got dyslexia and reading abilities. That's one of the reasons why the videos are very simple and explained in a simple, hopefully a simple way for you guys to understand. But I've got dyslexia as well. So yeah, I struggle. And sometimes you'll see me read the questions two or three times, especially in the videos, you see me mess up my words, but I just leave it in the video because I'm not perfect. And the videos aren't about being perfect. Right. Let me um, do the has perception first and foremost. Let me get my iPad out. And iPad share. Let me get rid of this. All right, before we go into that, let me quickly explain. You got on the has a perception for the real test, it's 14 videos. 13 of them have single hazards. And one of them's got a double, so you've got to keep clicking, so it's two fives. You need to average three across the board. So ideally, you want 44 minimum, 
the more you get, the more breathing space you're gonna have. So if you do click a couple of zeros and you get fives and fours, it's gonna bring the average up. What you're looking for on the videos is anything that's gonna cause you a problem, change direction or change your speed. That's what you're looking for. And when you tap your screen, that tap, if you was driving in a real video, is you checking the mirror. So the tap is mirror. So it should be video, when you're watching the video, problem, mirror, problem, mirror, i.e. problem, tap, problem, tap. Go for two clicks, just in case you click early. So you click once and you go one, two, and then you click again. Just in case the first click was too early, your second click will get you a five or a four. If your first click was a five or a four and the second one was a three or a two, you're always gonna get the highest score. There's no disadvantage of clicking once, but there's so many cons in clicking once. So that's my advice to you. Keep the chat coming, I will catch up with it. So let me just do the hazard perception because some of you are waiting for that. So I'm gonna do two hazard perceptions. One, um, real life clip which is on the videos on your app and a CGI clip, which on when you take your test, the real test, they're all CGI's. So it's all crystal clear and obviously on the bigger screen. So let me find the real life clips. Have I gone past them? Right, real life. Let's just pick a random one that I've not done before. Let's get more stars on this. Hopefully you guys can see this. So when you're watching the video, you should be scanning from pavement to pavement. That's how you should be driving anyway. So it's literally from pavement to pavement. That's where road signs are and road markings are on the floor in front of you. So you've got the car coming towards me on my side of the road. So it's two clicks. Another car turning. It's two clicks. The guy at the back of the van. Two clicks. And the doors opening. Two clicks. That's probably the hazard to be fair, because that's the one that's actually caused me to stop. But I keep watching just in case it's a double. Got a triangle telling me a crossroads, cars coming out. Two clicks. There you go. And then for those of you that are struggling with the hazard perception, funny how I could do it live, but I can't do it on my own videos. Um, for those of you who are struggling with the hazard perception, do them individually like I've done and then review it back. So you're trying to perfect your click. It sounds weird what I'm about to say. You're not looking for the hazard. You're trying to get a score. You can see the hazard as much as you want. But if you click too early, you get a zero. You're trying to get in the countdown window, which I'm going to show you now. Let's just speed it up. Right, that's a prime example there. So I clicked way too early on that one. That's my first click, I've seen the problem. Now, this goes back to what I was saying to you before. I've seen the problem, let's get it back. I've seen the problem and I've clicked. If I leave it like that, that's a zero. It's not about me seeing it, it's about me getting a score. So let me just play that back again. There's my first click. And to make sure I get a score, I click twice. And there's my second click. And I've even clicked three times, four times, just to make sure. And that's the reason why you go for two clicks. But before I move on, let me just make sure you guys are getting that. So I'm just seeing guys' questions, but I want to deal with the hazard perception first. Right, no one's... Thank you for the way of explaining the hazard perception. Let's put Diana up there. Thanks for the way of explaining the hazard perception. It's really helpful. Hopefully it's helping you guys out with that. Declan, congratulations on passing. Right, let me just do another one for you guys. So that was real life clip and the CGI's which you'll get on the real test. Let's do one that I've not clicked on before. This one. Same thing. Scan the road from 
Um, and this one, grass verge to grass verge. Because that's where your road signs are. So the sign said me pedestrians crossing in the road. Right there. Because the car's going around the puddle on my side of the road. And that's the reason why I'm clicking there. I think I was late on that one. And then if you look ahead, there's a... Oh, you can't see that. Hold on. Let me just do that again. Let me come out of that. Clear. Sorry, guys. Right, now you can see that. Um, so again, grass first to grass first is where you should be driving from left to right, right to left. Because again, I repeat, that's where road sides are at the side of the road. So that's telling me pedestrians are crossing the road. The car is going on my side of the road because of the puddle. Same thing with the car behind. So again, because that's caused me to stop, that's probably going to be the one that's going to be the issue. But still keep going because it could be the one with the double hazard on there. So again, if you take a look ahead, you've got the cyclist in front. So I'm going to click on that as you go, the car pulls out to the right. And then watching the road ahead, there's a car coming towards me, but it's on their side of the road and I'm on my side of the road. So it doesn't cause me an issue. So I don't need to click. And then you've got the black and white arrows, which is finished there. Again, a five out of five. I can do it on live, but I can't do it on my own video. It's ridiculous. Um, so again, let's just speed it up. So there's my two clicks for the first car. I left it really late on that. But I still got a five. And then with the car going around this puddle, I still click. As I said, I've got a five and a two based on the double clicks, but they will always give you the highest score. And that's why there's advantages of clicking twice, not once. Don't go click, click, literally click one, two, click again. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me catch up with you guys to see if it does. Beware of vehicles and pedestrians that may suddenly appear from hidden driveways. There is a sharp bend to the left. Reduce your speed in good time. For you, Patricia, yeah, why not? Let me find it first. Right, let's do this one. Uh, make sure you can see it this time. Okay, so this is a double one. Obviously, you won't know in advance which one's a double when you take the real test. That's why you just keep clicking. So again, look beyond the silver car in front. If you don't just look at the silver car, it could be too late. So you're looking beyond the silver car from left to right, right to left, looking for issues. So if you take a look in the distance, you've got the black and white poles and the zigzags. I'm going to click on that one just again because I think I'm late on that. So that's the one that's caused me to slow down. So probably going to get me a mark on that. And again, you want to be looking in the distance as far as you can see. The car's on my side of the road. So I click on that. And another car's on my side of the road. So I click on that. So just in case for those of you taking driving lessons, if you don't know, the less space you have, the slower you should go. Our instructors, we normally say um, less space, less speed. And that's what you do. And that's the reason why I've clicked for the, the cars on my side of the road, because I need to reduce my speed. Again, play it back. So that's eight out of 10. Ideally, when you do your doubles, you want an eight out of 10, seven out of 10. It brings your average up, just in case you got a couple of twos, a couple of threes. Because remember, your average has to be three or more throughout the videos to pass. So let's do the first one. So I said, as you look beyond the silver car, you see clues, zigzags. That's a zero, by the way, just in case, make sure half of you can see that. That's a zero on my first click, but I always go for two clicks. There's my second. And 
And then let me just fast forward to save your time. There's my first click. Because the car's on my side of the road, so I need to reduce my speed. Oops, let's go back. And there's my second click. As I said, there's no disadvantage of clicking twice per hazard. It's going to save you more than not. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Let me just catch up with the comments before you sign off. There's a couple of comments I want to address before we go. Um, parking the shop flame. Parking that obstructs flow going over here. Over here. Oh, again, Toyin, I'm not understanding that. Sorry. Um, Claudia, hello. How are you? Oh, it's good that. Oh, well done. Um, it's good to see you well, and you passed your ferry test. Congratulations. Hopefully, the driving goes really well for you. Yes, the stopping distances. So at 30 miles an hour, for example, it's 75 feet. At 20 miles an hour, it's 40. Sorry, 75 feet. Yeah, 40 feet for 20 miles an hour. Those are no longer in it. So you don't need to know the individual speeds for 20, 30, 40, and so on and so on. All you need to know is two seconds dry, four seconds or double when it's wet, and up to 10 times longer for ice and snow. We don't need the individual stopping distance for speed limits anymore. Congratulations on passing. Thank you for coming back and letting me know how you got on. I appreciate that. Oh, you two having a conversation. Appreciate that. Right, let me catch up with you guys in the chat. Strong to post my ferry, I need your help. If you mean book your ferry, that's the .gov. I've got nothing to do with that. Um, that's the dot .gov website, the dvsa.gov.uk website. How many can I click? If you're counting your clicks, you're doing the wrong way. That's the wrong attitude to have. If you click on problems that exist, it can't be too many. If you click on problems that don't exist, it can add up to too many. But if you're going into the hazard perception, counting your clicks, it's wrong. Um, I've got a video on the channel that explains that in detail. So my advice, don't count your clicks. And if you're counting, ask yourself why. All you're trying to do is click on hazards. Uh, driving test success, otherwise none's a four in one. Um, get it through your um, app store. Congratulations, Benga, for passing. Appreciate it for letting me know. Diana, see you next week. Tomorrow is your test. Good luck with that. Patricia, no problem. You've been here long enough, so I'll do it for you. Yeah, you can do a free click method, but um, just choose what's right for you. Literally just choose what's right for you because um, everyone's different. Marie, thank you. Take your time, read the questions very carefully and read the answers very carefully. And also I would uh, take deep breaths. Please explain me minimum and maximum difference. Between what? Between what? You've got to give me a bit more information. Explain minimum, maximum. That's a driving test question, to be honest, minimum, maximum. But if it's on the ferry test, let me know what you're talking about. Tina Reen, um, no problem. Simply means wishing good luck. That's the last one. Um, you've got to give me a bit more information, minimum, maximum. Like I said, that's a driving test question. Show me, tell me. Um, I'm not understanding what you mean by that for the theory test. But good luck with it on Friday the 12th. This week. Right, so that's the last comment. So hopefully you guys got some benefit from that. Remember, next week I will do my best to do 
my uh, mock test. I haven't done one for a while. So I'll come back to make sure you guys are fully understanding the theory test and not just memorizing your answers. So have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of the week. For those of you that's got a test coming up this week, good luck with it. Keep your fingers, my fingers crossed for you. And hopefully I'll see you next week with good news. All right. Cheers. See ya.